Welcome geometry students to class today on this Thursday, uh, May 1st. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're ready to learn some math today. Uh, first of all, we will have a quiz on Friday tomorrow, and I will go over that information in just a second for you. Now, this is really important that you understand this. Um, you owe me homework from yesterday. Yesterday was the homework video. Now, four of you turned it in early, so Jake, you're not late on anything. In fact, Jake, you're right where you're supposed to be. Um, but you need to turn in this homework that we did yesterday in class, okay? And even though it was a Wednesday, I did say you needed to finish it because there was no way, in my opinion, that you should not have finished that during class. So, Jasa, Azu, Martin, um, Haley, um, I have all of yours. You guys turned yours in early. It wasn't due until today, but you turned it in yesterday. So that's great. Jake, be sure and turn yours in. Now, I'm not showing favoritism toward Azu, but she's done a sterling job this year of turning everything in on time, every time. So Azu, I'm not sure if I've made a mistake, but I'm going through my papers here again, and I did not get Monday's assignment from you. Now, maybe you weren't in class Monday. I'm not sure. Maybe because of the senior trip coming in late Sunday, maybe you didn't come in Monday, but this is what we did in class on Monday, right? Let's see. You turned Wednesdays in right here. You turned Wednesdays in yesterday. We did that yesterday, and you turned it in. This is Mondays right here, page 591, 2 through 35 all. You did not turn that in. Um, if you have that, I need you to turn that in today, please, okay? If there's a problem, email me or call me, okay? But I did not get that, and I, I need to get that turned in from you, okay? All right, that's it for the announcements. Let's go ahead and review what we've covered this week, and you know what, guys? Um, what we're, um, what I'm going to review right now is also what's going to be on your quiz tomorrow. So I'm going to cover what we've covered this week, and then that's also going to be on your quiz. So on your quiz tomorrow, I am giving you no fill in the blanks. That's definitions, theorems. There are none. So I know you're going to like that. Let me say that again, no fill in the blanks. However, there could be some matching. In fact, there will be something like this, where you have to be able to tell me, you know, what the center of a circle is, what a diameter is, what a radius is, what a secant is, what a tangent is, what a radius is, okay, what a point of tangency is. You need to be familiar with all those terms so that you can identify them on an object if I give you an object or a figure, okay? No fill in the blanks, but you need to be able to identify them. If I give you a diameter, you should be able to find the radius. If I give you the radius, you should be able to find the diameter. If I give you a problem like this, and I told you this line right here is tangent, and I told you this line here was a radius drawn to the point of tangency right here, then you know you have a right angle. So if you have a right angle, then you know that you have a right triangle. And if you have a right triangle, then you know um, that you can use Pythagorean's theorem and solve for x here. So be able to solve problems like that. <clears throat> Also, if I give you a problem like this and I say prove to me that this line right here is tangent to the circle, then what you have to do is you have to prove that you have a right triangle. And so you know you have a leg of 9, a leg of 12, and a hypotenuse of 15. So you would have 9 squared plus 12 squared equals 15 squared. And when you work both sides out, you should get two numbers that are the same. Okay, so be able to do those. And then lastly, whenever you have two segments that are tangent to the same circle and they both come from the same point, that means this segment here is always going to be congruent to this segment here. So you should be able to solve problems like this. Okay, so that's a review of what we've covered this week and that is also a review of what will be on your quiz tomorrow. Okay, so call me or email me if you have any questions um, about that. Today we are going to look at two more parts of a circle that we have not studied yet. They are called arcs and central angles. So here are the two parts we're going to study today. This video will be long. However, there will not be any homework tonight. So if you do not finish this video in class, which I think you will, okay, but if you don't, you must finish it tonight. Mr. Hart, you don't know if we finish it. I don't. You're right. But it hurts you if you don't finish it. So please finish your video tonight. Okay? 
All right, let's go ahead and continue on. Your heading is arcs and central angles, lesson 11.3, and the date today is May 1st, 2014. May 1st, 2014. Instead of giving you word definitions, which I usually do, I'm going to show you what arcs and central angles are. Let's start today with central angles. Okay, let me go ahead and draw a circle here for you. I'd like you to take some really good notes on this, please. And now let's go ahead and draw a point here in the center of the circle and then an angle. There you go. Students, now you know what a central angle is. So instead of giving you a, giving you a word definition, I'm just showing you. Okay, now if you have an angle drawn inside of a circle like this, that is not a central angle. This is called the vertex of the angle. This is called the vertex of the angle. Please listen to me. You only have a central angle when the vertex of the angle is at the center of the circle. And as you can tell, this is not the center of the circle right here. The only way you have a central angle is when you have an angle drawn inside of a circle in such a way that the vertex is right at the center and the angle has to hit the circle. Now it can go past the circle. I don't mind that. That's fine, okay? But a central angle must have its vertex right at the center of the circle and it must intersect the circle in two places and we call that a central angle by the way every central angle really has two measures and you're like Mr. Earhart what do you mean well watch if this angle right here is I don't know 50 degrees then that means this angle here on the outside would have to be 310 degrees because remember the complete degrees in a circle is 360 degrees so if this much of the angle right here is 50 then the rest of this angle right here has to be 310 because 310 plus 50 is 360. Now we'll talk about that more later but my point is this when you have a central angle every time you have a central angle listen to me you have the smaller angle and then you have the larger angle and you've got to remember that okay because we're going to use both of those in our math today. So going over this one more time, a central angle is when the vertex is at the center of the circle and then your angle intersects the circle in two different places, okay? Now let's continue on. Let's talk about arcs, okay? You need to know what an arc is. So here we go. Please take some really good notes on this. Draw a circle in your notes. Now an arc is when you have A central angle like this. Go ahead and draw that in your notes please. And notice how this angle cuts off a section of the circle right here. Do you see that? Well that is called an arc. This measurement or this length that lies on the circle, this blue uh, curved line I'm drawing, that is called an arc. Okay, so this angle right here is called a central angle, and this section that's divided off on the circle is called an arc. Okay, now we call this, please watch carefully, students. We call this arc AB, and you write it like this you put a little arc and you put AB, and that means arc AB. Now, can I please show you something? Please watch this carefully. Let me show you something. Every arc really has two arcs. For example, if I have this section right here cut off on the circle by this point and this point, then do I not have a bigger arc right here that runs from point A all the way to point B? Sure definitely. So how do you know which one's your 
bigger arc or your smaller arc. I mean, the smaller arc here is AB, but this is also arc AB. Well, listen to me carefully. Your smaller arc is always called your minor arc, okay? And your bigger arc is called your major arc. And there's one other thing you need to know. A minor arc is always denoted by two letters, but a major arc is always denoted by three letters. And so what you would need is another letter right here, and we'll call that C. And so the arc that runs from here all the way to B, because that's the bigger arc, that's the bigger arc, we call that arc A, C, B. A, C, B, in that order. Don't say A, B, C, because arc A, B, C would go from A to B to C. So arc A, B, C would start at A, and it would go to C, and that would be arc A, B, C. We're going from A all the way to B, so we say arc A, C, B, or you could say arc B, C, A. That would be fine, arc B, C, A. So let me say this again. Your smaller arc is always your minor arc, and your bigger arc is always your major arc. A minor arc is always named by how many letters? Two. And a major arc is always named by three letters. Please don't forget that, okay? Now, that you also need to realize this. Let me clear all this off. Sometimes you'll have a circle, and you'll have a diameter drawn like this. Now watch. There's a diameter. Well, first of all, that is a central angle. Understand that is a central angle. It's a straight angle. And remember, all straight angles measure what? 180 degrees. So first of all, that is a central angle. It is. Here's your vertex. And here's one ray going this way, hitting the circle. And here's the other ray going the other way, hitting the circle. So that is a central angle. But also, I wanted to show you that what you have here is you have an arc. And whenever a diameter makes an arc, we call this arc a what? You know what we call this. It's half of a circle. What do we call half of a circle? Don't we call half of a circle a semicircle? Sure we do, definitely. And so whenever you have a diameter drawn, we would call that, we don't call that a major or a minor arc, we just call it mark arc AB, and some might use three letters, some books, it's really not important as long as you know it's a semicircle. So if you have a diameter drawn, it cuts the circle in half, so this arc here would be a semicircle, but also this arc down here would also be a semicircle, okay? So understand all of that, and let me one more time mention this to you guys, okay? So please really pay attention to this, it's very important you get this, okay? Anytime you have a central angle that's drawn, it's going to form a minor angle, which is here, and then a major angle, or a major, I hope I said arc, let me start over. Um, whenever you have a central angle, it's going to form a minor arc, which is the smaller arc, and then it's also going to form a major arc, which is the bigger arc, and you have to have three letters when you name the major arc and you need two letters when you name the minor arc okay so please keep all of that in mind let's continue on now this is very very important the measure of an arc is always the same as the measure of a central angle always the measure of an arc is always the same as the measure of a central angle, always. Please don't forget that, okay? So in other words, let me show you what I mean. If I have a circle drawn here like this, and I have a central angle like this, and let's say this angle measurement here is 130 degrees, then guess what? The arc measurement from here, letter A, all the way down to letter B, we call that 
130 degrees. It's that easy. Now, students, come on, think with me, okay? Really make sure you're paying attention. What if I asked you to find the measure of the bigger arc right here? Well, remember, the distance around an entire circle is 360 degrees, correct? 360 degrees. So with that in mind, if this much is 130, then this green arc from here all the way to here would have to be 230 degrees because 230 degrees from here to here plus 130 from here to here is 360. You see when you go all the way around a circle and you add up all of the arcs they have to add up to 360 okay but the main thing I want to show you here is whatever your central angle is that is what your arc is going to be okay so with that in mind let's jump right into this okay turn your books to page 601 and let's look at the first example name the red arc identify it and then find its measure okay let's look at the first problem here now notice the red arc is right here I'm gonna highlight it in red for if you'll look in your book go ahead and turn your books to page 601 example number one please and look in your book in your notes I would write page 101 example number one and then look see the red arc right here okay they want you to identify that so we're gonna say it's a what we're gonna say it's a minor arc which it is and then we're gonna call it what arc d f that should make total sense and now what is the measurement of this arc well what's the central angle the central angle is 40 so that means this arc right here is 40 degrees so the measurement of the arc is the same thing <clears throat> as the central angle now look at number two here or letter B notice your red arc is right here it's kind of faded in the picture so I'm gonna highlight it for you with my red pen okay and then the blue is also a little blurry but if you look in your book this is 110 degrees now first of all they want you to name or identify the red arc well you know that's a major arc it's the bigger one out of the two your minor arc would be right here from here to here that blue line would be your minor arc so it's your major arc and we need three letters to name it all major arcs have to be named with three letters so we're gonna call that arc L M N or you can call it arc N M L as long as you have M in the middle that's totally fine okay so there we go now they want you to find the measure of this red arc now think about that students if this central angle right here in blue is 110 degrees then that means this arc in blue right here is also what 110 degrees so the red arc has to be a number so that when you add 110 to it you get 360 so the red arc has to be 250 degrees it has to be because from here to here is 250 and then from here to here is 110 and when you add those two arcs together you get 360 remember the total arcs around the outside of a circle will always add up to 360 okay let's move on now to page 602 I would write in your notes example number two example number two they want us to find the measure of G E F now you can look at how they've done it I prefer you just kind of listen to what I'm teaching you here but they want us to find this measure this arc right here major arc GEF so we go with G to E <clears throat> and then to F so they want us to find that whole arc now think about it guys come on from here to here we have 40 degrees so we know it's 40 and from here to here we know the central angle is 80 so this arc right here has to be 80 and then notice from here to here this arc right here right here 
it has a central angle of 110, so we know this arc has to be 110. So from here to here is 40, from here to here is 80, from here to here is 110. Add all three of them up, and you should get 230 degrees, okay? So really not too difficult as long as you grasp the fact that, a, that a, a, an arc, a minor arc, is always equal to the measurement of its central angle. Okay, in your notes, I would write down page 602, example number three. Okay, find the measures of the blue arcs. Okay, find the measure of the blue arcs. Well, and then are the arcs congruent? Well, let's see. Here we go. Let's find out. Notice we have a blue arc here. I'm going to highlight it for you so you can see it a little better. And notice we have a blue arc right here. Okay. Well, look, students, I mean, we have a central angle of 45, a central angle of 45, so the measurement of both of these arcs would be 45 degrees. Now, look what they're trying to teach you here. You know what they're trying to teach here? Teach you, they're trying to teach you that two arcs might have the same measurement, but they'll not be congruent. And let me show you what I mean. These two arcs here are both 45 degrees, and both of these arcs are congruent. So you're welcome to write arc AB is congruent to arc DC. That's totally fine. They're congruent. And we know that because they both have the same central angle. And listen to this, students. They both lie on the same circle. But now let's come over here to example B and be really careful. Please watch this. Here's a blue arc right here. I'm highlighting it for you right there. And here's a blue arc here. Now, I want to cut these two circles out for you, and I really want you to pay attention, okay? So watch this carefully, please. Watch carefully what I do, okay? Here's one circle here. Here's the other circle right here. Now watch what I do. Watch this carefully. I'm going to go ahead and erase all of this. I want all of that gone. I'm going to pull this over here. Now watch carefully what I do here. Okay, there's my little circle. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to see these lines right here. See that line there and that line there? Watch what I do. I'm going to put that right here where it's supposed to be. There and there. And I'm going to do the same thing here. There and there. Now this central angle right here is 65 degrees. It tells you that right here. And this angle right here, even though you can't see it, I'm going to draw an arrow for you, okay? This central angle right here is 65 degrees. So what that tells me is this. If this central angle is 65 degrees, then this arc right here in blue, I'm highlighting in blue for you, this arc right here in blue, if the central angle is 65 degrees, then what is this arc right here? 65 degrees. If this central angle is 65 degrees, what is this arc right here? 65 degrees. However, come on, use common sense here. Are these two arcs congruent? Well, no. This arc here is smaller. It's on a smaller circle than this arc here. So just because two arcs have the same degree measurement doesn't mean they're congruent. If they lie on the same circle like they did over here, then yes, if two arcs have the same measurement and they lie on the same circle, then they're going to be congruent. But if two arcs lie on two different circles and they have the same measurement, they might be congruent. They might not be, okay? So be very careful about that, all right? Okay, let's continue on. Okay, now we're going to go pretty quick through this. Pay attention, okay? Find the measures of these arcs and state whether they're congruent, okay? So we're going to find the measurement of BC and EF. Okay, I'm going to use a red pen here. Okay, here's BC right here. Its central angle is 58, so I know BC is 58 degrees. Now I have arc EF. EF is right here, okay? 
and that's also going to be 58 degrees. Now, are they congruent? Yes, because they have the same measurement and they lie on the same circle. So definitely, if they lie on the same circle and they have the same measurement, then they're congruent. Okay. All right, number two, the measurement of BC, we already found that earlier, so we're going to go ahead and put it right here, 58 degrees, and now the measurement of CD. We hear CD right here. Now, the central angle is 72 degrees, so the measurement of CD would be 72 degrees. So are they congruent? Not at all. No, not a bit. Let's take a look at number three. Now, they want us to find the measurement of arc CD. We already found it right over here, so I'm going to go ahead and put 72 degrees for arc CD. Now, for arc DE, and here's DE right here, Oh, we're going to have to find this one, okay, students? Now think about it. Here I have 72. Here I have 58. Here I have 100. And here I have 58. So if I quickly add, if I quickly add all of those arcs together, I'm going to get 288 degrees. So if I take 72 plus 58 plus 100 plus 58, I'll get 288. And then if I subtract that from 360, I'll get 72 degrees. So this leftover arc here has to be 72, which, by the way, means this central angle is also 72 degrees. So DE is also 72 degrees. So are these two arcs congruent? Yes, they are, because they're both 72 degrees, and they both lie on the same circle. Now, lastly, let's take a look at BFE and CBF. Okay, arc BFE. Let's start with... Let's start with um, B. Let me get a different color of ink here. Let's start with B and go to F and then go to E, B, F, E. Okay? Now from B to F we have 100 and from F to E we have 58. So the total arc length from B, F, E is going to be 158 degrees. Now Let's look at arc CBF. So here's C, and then I go to B, and then I go to F. So C, then B, then F. Well, CB is 58, BF is 100, so 100 plus 58 is 158. So both of these arcs are 158, and they both lie on the same circle. So they are definitely going to be congruent, both of them, okay? And then lastly, um, let's go ahead and take a look at one more different kind of problem here. And I think you'll find these pretty challenging, but hang in there and I'll help you. I think we can figure this out, okay? If you'll turn your books to page 603 and look at the very bottom of the page, you'll see the directions say to find the length of the red arc. Now, yes, I know that the measurement of the arc is 120 degrees. I get that but they want you to find the actual length. How long is that arc? And I'm going to show you how to do this very, very simply in a couple steps. So write these steps down, please. Step one, find, always, find the circumference of the circle by using this formula here, pi d. Okay? And then step two, once you find the circumference, Okay, take the circumference times the fraction of the circle that you're dealing with. Let me go over this again. Step one, you find the circumference. And step two, you then take the circumference and multiply it by the fraction of the circle that you're dealing with. Now write this down, please. Pause the video and write this down. And then when you're done, um, go ahead and turn the video back on. I want to explain what I mean by these steps. Okay, so here we go. Let's take a look at number five here. Let's first of all find the circumference of the circle, okay? Now notice I have a radius of two. So if I have a radius of two, then my diameter is going to be what? Four. So step one says find the circumference of the circle by using pi d. And of course pi is 3.14 and my diameter is four. 
So with the calculator, if I take 3.14 and multiply it by 4, I'm going to get 12.56. So just like that, step 1 is done. I have found the circumference of the circle. Okay. Now, the next thing you do, step 2, is you take your circumference, which is 12.56, and you multiply it by the fraction of the circle you're dealing with. Well, are you not dealing with this arc right here? Sure you are. And what is the measurement of that arc? 120. So the fraction would be what? The fraction you're dealing with is 120 out of what? 360. I mean, isn't that true? Think about it. Your central angle is 120, so the actual arc is 120. So what fraction of the circle are you dealing with? 120 over 360. Now you have uh, fraction buttons on your calculator. This should be very easy to do. You simply type in 12.56 times 120 divided by 360 and you should get out 4.18 uh, 4.186 repeating which rounds to 4.19 which is what they have right here so there you go we know the actual measurement of this arc right here is 4.19 inches pretty easy okay if you'll use those two steps it'll work every single time Okay, all right, let's go ahead and try a couple more, and then we're finished with the video. All right, let's take a look at number six. Okay, problem number two, uh, students, they want us to find the length of this red arc, okay? Now, step one says find the circumference of the circle. And I know it's a little blurry, and I apologize, but if you'll look in your book, you'll see it's 180 degrees, and you'll see the radius is 4 feet. Now, if the radius is 4, then the diameter has to be what? 8. So let's go ahead and do step one. Let's find the circumference. Circumference equals pi times diameter. So 3.14 times 8 and if you type that incorrectly you'll get 25.12 so the circumference of the circle is 25.12 now step 2 says to take your circumference and multiply it by the fraction of the circle you're dealing with well the fraction I'm dealing with come on students think about it if this is 180 degrees that means I have a straight line and if that's 180 degrees then that means this angle here is 180 degrees and if that angle there is 180 degrees and that means this arc is 180 degrees so the fraction I'm dealing with is 180 out of 360 so with your calculator all that you have to do is take 25.12 times 180 divided by 360 and if you type that incorrectly you will get 12.56 now they get 12.57 which is fine they rounded to a different place but nonetheless um, that is the answer and it's feet so the length of the arc is 12.57 feet all right let's take a look at one more and we're finally finished let me go ahead and make this a little easier for you to read um, this is six for your radius and this is 90 degrees and here's your red arc right here now they want us to find the length of that red arc Now don't get confused I know the measurement of the arc is 90 degrees because this in here is also 90 degrees I get that okay but they want to know the actual measurement of this arc so step one is find the circumference now if the radius is 6 then the diameter has to be 12 so to find the circumference I'm going to use pi which is 3.14 times my diameter which is 12 so I'm going to type into my calculator 3.14 times 12 and if you type that in correctly you will get 37.68 now that's your circumference now step 2 says to take your circumference 37.68 and multiply it by the fraction that you're dealing with now the fraction that you're dealing with is very obvious the central angle is 90 so the arc is 90 so you're dealing with 90 
out of how many total degrees in a circle? 360. So with your calculator, take 37.68 times 90 divided by 360, and you should get 9.42. 9.42, which is correct. Now it's 9.42. If you'll look at your, if you'll look in your book here, your radius is six centimeters so your answer is 9.42 centimeters okay now that's it for the class period I know it's a long video but I did not give you any homework okay tomorrow when you come into class you will take a quiz as soon as the bell rings I might give you like three or four minutes to study and then you'll watch and do a homework video um, and that homework will be due Monday, okay? Please call or email if you have any questions at all, if you need any help. I hope you guys have a good day.